Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be reviewing the new Celestron Origin Intelligent Home Observatory. This is a new product that's going to be released soon by Celestron and it's similar to some of the other automated observatories available such as the ZWO C-STAR S50. Uh, these automated telescopes are becoming quite popular these days so I wanted to give you an idea of what to expect with this new product. So this is what it looks like according to the images released by Celestron. Over the years I have used uh, the Celestron Hyperstar C11 Edge HD pretty extensively and uh, that is also an f2.2 telescope so it is very similar to this C6 Rasa uh, optical tube uh, and I've gotten some great images with it and since they both share very similar properties and very fast optics uh, my experience from my C11 Edge HD Hyperstar would apply to the Celestron Origin as well also uh, as you can see behind me right over here I have the Celestron uh, evolution mount which is basically the same mount that's going to come with the Celestron Origin. Uh, the new mount's going to have some minor cosmetic differences but under the hood it is the exact same mount. Uh, and lastly the Sony IMX178 sensor that is included with the Celestron Origin. Uh, I've been using that sensor for many years now for astrophotography as well as guiding. So I have quite a bit of experience with that sensor and uh, I produced some pretty decent images with it such as this one. This is the ring nebula that I had imaged with the uh, the QHY version of this sensor, the QHY178. It was also an uncooled color sensor. Uh, so as you can see, we've got a good amount of detail in there. The central star is easily visible and you can see this faint background galaxy as well. So it is a fairly capable sensor, if a little bit old. So let's uh, let's take a look at the C6 Rasa. So now, as as I had mentioned, the optical tube is a six-inch, uh, very fast f2.2 optical tube. The Celestron Evolution mount, uh, which comes with built-in Wi-Fi and a built-in battery, and the Sony IMX178 sensor. So those are the three main components of this Celestron Origin system. Uh, also, it has a built-in Raspberry Pi computer for capturing images and for processing the data. It can do some more basic processing on your phone as well if needed. And for the more advanced astrophotographers, you can actually download the raw data from the telescope uh, onto your computer so you can process it more in whatever software you use for image processing. Now, the pros I found of this system uh, are that the focal ratio is quite fast, like my C11 Edge HD Hyperstar. This is a fairly fast f2.2 focal ratio system, uh, and the aperture is the largest I've seen so far in any of the automated telescopes at 150 millimeters or 6 inches. Uh, the mount, which I've been using for a while now, uh, is quite sturdy for an optical tube of this size and has a built-in battery, which works quite well and should last you the entire night of imaging. Uh, also, one of the other pluses is that you can access the raw data for post-processing later, which you cannot easily do in some of the other alternative automated imaging systems. It uh, has built-in plate solving and autofocusing. Both of those options are built right into the optical tube. It has a dew heater built in, which is very convenient because on any nights uh, where the dew point is close to the ambient temperature, you are likely to get dew. It has a built in filter drawer, so that saves you from having to buy uh, an extra filter drawer. And also it has built in processing and it is very easy to use. Everything that you could possibly need to get started is built right in, so you don't have to mix and match components yourself. Now some of the cons of this system that I have seen is that the camera, the uh, IMX178 chip from Sony that's included in here, is quite old. Um, I was using that sensor back in 2018, 2019, so now in 2024, that is a fairly outdated chip, still fairly capable, but I do wish they had gone with the newer uh, IMX678 or the IMX585 chips. Uh, they're 
you know, not not too much larger. In the case of the IMX 678, it is the same size as the IMX 178 that the Celestron Origin uses, just a much newer version. So I'm not sure why they decided to go with the older IMX 178 chip. And it is possible that they might offer an upgraded imaging camera in the future uh, using either the IMX 678 or the IMX 585. And uh, so that would resolve that particular issue. Um, one of the other cons of this setup that I can see is that the, uh, the mount, the Celestron Evolution mount included with this setup is an Altaz mount, so the individual, individual exposures are quite limited. Um, I think it'll be using 10 to 15 second sub exposures, so that that is somewhat limiting, uh, but because this is an Altaz mount, that is, is kind of a limitation of the system. If you take very long exposures using an Altaz mount, you end up getting field rotation. So perhaps Celestron will offer a wedge in the future, but that, that kind of diminishes the advantage of this system, which is that it is a fairly portable all-in-one system, and a wedge tends to be large and unwieldy and heavy. So uh, I don't think a wedge would be very helpful in this case. And the third con that I notice is that the price is fairly high at 4,000 US dollars. It is a fairly expensive system, although no more expensive than some of the other alternatives out there. Now the alternatives uh, are the Unistellar EV scope, the Equinox 2, which is a four and a half inch scope, which is smaller, uh, but that's about 3,500 US dollars. There is the Vionis Stellina, which is an 80 millimeter scope or three inches, about half the uh, the uh, optical diameter of the Celestron Origin. That's the same price as the Origin at $4,000. And then there's the popular Seastar S50, which I'm a big fan of. It is very small, very portable, um, but it only has a two inch uh, objective. So uh, it goes for $499, which is quite a bit, about eight times cheaper than the Celestron Origin. Uh, so my favorite among them, uh, besides the Origin, because I have not had a chance to test that, is the Seastar S50, uh, just because of how portable and compact it is, and of course the low price. You all know I'm a, I'm a <laughs> big fan of saving money wherever I can. So now let's compare the uh, Celestron Origin to the Seastar S50, because that is, uh, uh, in my opinion, one of the most popular uh, systems right now. So the aperture of the Celestron Origin is 150 millimeters or 6 inches, whereas the Seastar S50 is 50 millimeters. Uh, the unobstructed aperture of the Celestron Origin is 139 millimeters because it is a, uh, it has a secondary mirror that blocks some of the light, whereas the Seastar S50 being a refractor is uh, well, 50 millimeters. So the origin gathers about 7.7 .7 times more light than the Seastar S50. The focal length of the Celestron origin is 335 millimeters, whereas the Seastar S50 is 250 millimeters. So the origin is 100, uh, sorry, about uh, 1.34 times greater in terms of focal length. So the objects will look larger. Uh, now, having used both of these, uh, both of these sensors. This is what the uh, Q, the IMX 178 sensor of the Celestron Origin would look like in terms of size. And compared to that, this is what the QHY 462 sensor, or sorry, the Sony IMX 462 sensor, which I also use, would look like in comparison. So the Celestron Origin is going to have a much larger image, uh, which would be useful if you plan to print your images and you don't want to do mosaics, whereas the uh, the Seastar S50 will have a 1920 by 1080 size uh, image so it'll be more suitable for looking at on your computer monitor or on your phone rather than printing. 
so going back here uh, now the C star even though the actual image is going to be smaller on the C star it does have a newer more sensitive sensor and since I own both of these sensors I've had a chance to compare both of them and the IMAX 462 is a lower noise sensor so uh, that's why I think uh, that Celestron should perhaps used have used the IMX 678 sensor instead of the IMX 178 which is the older model now the uh, Celestron Origin has smaller pixels at 2.4 microns which theoretically gives it more detail uh, whereas the C-Star S50 is 2.9 microns and as uh, you saw in the images that I shared the IMAX 178 of the Celestron Origin is a 6 megapixel sensor whereas the C-Star S50 is 2 megapixels and the actual sensor uh, is 9 millimeters uh, diagonally in the uh, Celestron Origin whereas in the C-Star S50 is about 6.4 uh, millimeters so it is smaller and, but the actual field of view because the C-Star S50 has a shorter focal length is fairly similar so the field of view in the Celestron Origin is 0.9 degrees by 1.3 degrees whereas in the C-Star S50 is 0.7 degrees by 1.3 degrees so the Celestron Origin does have uh, a, a slightly larger field of view but also a much larger image so it wins in that regard now going back in um, you can see some sample images that Celestron had shared uh, this is the first one here this is the bubble nebula then this was Messier 101 a very large galaxy in uh, Ursa Major this is a 1200 second uh, total integration this is the crab nebula a one hour integration and this is the whirlpool galaxy which is 600 seconds or 10 minutes of integration time so the images are, are quite good uh, I think better than any of the other automated observatories or the intelligent observatories these days can produce uh, but not quite what what I would consider you know world-class performance um, for example, uh, one of the images that I had taken with a much cheaper setup, but of course a much harder to use setup, is this one here. So this is the Messier 51 Whirlpool Galaxy from the Celestron Origin. And this is one that I had taken with an ASI 1600 monochrome camera. Uh, and uh, I believe this one was with an 8-inch reflector, if I remember correctly. But you can see the difference in the level of detail if you're willing to put in the work and get a lot more integration time. Now, if you're wondering whether you can build a system like the Celestron Origin, how much that would cost. So I did the math and I checked online to see what the current prices are. So you can get a Celestron C6 XLT for about 850 US dollars, a Star Arizona Hyperstar, sorry, a Star Arizona Hyperstar for $670. This is the newest version 4 for the C6. ASI 533 MC Pro camera, which I would recommend for about $800. The ZWO AM3 mount, which is far superior to the Celestron Evolution mount, for $1,500. The ZWO EAF autofocuser, $200. And the Dew Shield and Dew Ring would set you back about $85. And I would recommend the ZWO ASI Air Plus, which will cost you about $200. So in total, if you want to DIY a system like the Celestron Origin, these are the components I would pick, and the total cost would be about $4,300. And that is not including a battery, because if you're like me and imaging from home, you are just using AC power, or if you're imaging from a site that does have power. So it does come to a bit more than the Celestron Origins, $4,000 cost but if you're willing to DIY things this would be a far more capable system that will allow you to get much much more capable images but the advantage of the Celestron Origin of course is going to be that the Celestron Origin is much much more portable much easier to image with you'll be up and running in 10 minutes versus spending you know an hour and a half getting things ready so that's that's what you have to decide if you want world-class results and you're willing to put in the work and spend time setting up versus whether you want or if you want ultimate portability and all in one uh, without any hassle so that's the main advantage of the Celestron origin system now 
um, looking to the future, uh, you know, one of the things I was looking at was that the C6 uh, Rasa optical tube, which is not available, uh, Intellistron hasn't announced any plans to release that to the public yet. If that's available by itself, uh, you know, I might even buy it in the future. That seems like a very capable portable system if it's put on a more capable uh, equatorial mount. Again, that would kind of kill the point of the Celestron origin system. It wouldn't be as um, as as portable or as easy to use, but that would be something that would be interesting. And I'm also curious to see what uh, Celestron is going to um, provide in terms of future camera upgrades, if it'll give us the option to upgrade from the included uh, IMX 178 chip to something like the 678 or the 585, or even maybe a larger chip than that. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. So I hope you found that useful. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more of my reviews like this, or you want me to do another review once the scope is actually out, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And thank you and uh, clear skies.